before 2022, it seemed that the main target for those services and for those activities was Ukraine itself. And um, the strategy was to weaken it prior to the invasion so that then it would just fold without too much of a fight. But as we have seen since, uh, it seems that those activities failed because it, it did not turn out the way that Russia intended to. So why did they fail in Ukraine? And was it perhaps because the activities or the services performing them were not as effective and efficient as Russia thought? So um, I want you to imagine that we're at a party um, and that you and I have somewhat of a disagreement with one another. Uh, and I start making some pretty unpleasant, should we say, jokes at your expense in front of the group of people that we're with. And some of those people might take my side on the issue and understand that that's what's going on, that there's a disagreement. And so they might laugh because they support my position. Some people might nervously laugh because they um, are, you know, they, they don't want to, to get into a, a, an uncomfortable situation and they're just laughing because other people are laughing, right? And some people who maybe take your position and stay quiet. But the result is that what you're actually hearing in the room is, is laughter. Um, and therefore, it feels like the majority of the room kind of supports me, right? Now, if instead I walked into the room and punched you in the face, most people in the room would probably say that what I'd just done was unacceptable, even the people who thought that maybe there was some validity to the disagreement that I had. The point is, is that there is a psychological process here, right? And what the Russians, the position the Russians were in prior to the invasion was one in which um, it was it was pretty much 50-50 when you took, polled Ukrainians on whether they would join the armed forces if, uh, if there was an invasion. Um, people didn't think an invasion was likely. They had very little confidence in the government. And there were an awful lot of people who were prepared to take Russian money and to do tasks for the Russian special services who, who worked in the Ukrainian government. And so in this situation where everyone understood that there was a fight going on, but you know, it wasn't, it wasn't too uh, egregious. Um, you had a large proportion of people prepared to go along with the Russians. The Russians made the assumption that the rough balance of where people stood that they were observing would also hold in a situation in which they were openly conducting aggression against Ukraine. And that just fundamentally wasn't the case. They attacked Ukraine and a very large number of people who were Oh, quite happy to take their money, quite happy to do everyday tasks for them, decided that actually I don't like the fact that you're bombing my grandmother's village and I'm not talking to you anymore. Um, and so the, the networks and the structures that they created just collapsed overnight. Um, they were very, very fragile and they didn't stand up in the radically different context that the Russians had then themselves created. I think it's worth noting though that that the Russian special services were not as blind to this problem as, as we sometimes make out. Uh, they were briefing the Kremlin that the preconditions for the invasion had not been met, that they needed more time. Um, and Putin decided to go ahead. Um, so that's Putin's decision and Garasimov's decision um, and a couple of other people, very, very small group. Uh, the view of the Russian special services was that they needed more time to to create political crisis because what they had failed to do in ukraine was to divide ukrainian society internally any countermeasures and disruption of that activity had been reasonably effective um and so you can also make the argument which is also the view that the ukrainian special services took prior to the invasion um the russians went too early 